Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and now let's study about the origin and insertions of the muscles on the ulna. Let's talk about the insertions first. The insertions on the ulna are the tab insertions. T-A-B, three insertions. The first T is of the triceps brachii. The triceps is inserted into the superior surface of the olecranon. As I mentioned earlier, there was a rough impression right here for the triceps insertion. Now, A is for anconius. The anconius is inserted into the lateral aspect of the olecranon process. And finally, the B, the brachialis, is inserted into the anterior surface of the coronoid process which contains the ulnar tuberosity. Now, let's talk about the origins. There are 10 origins of muscles from the ulna bone. Which ones are they? These are the pause origins. More specifically, the P cube A, U square, S square, E square origins. First origin that I will talk about is the easier one. The supinator crest gives origin to the supinator muscle. Then we have the flexor digitorum superficialis and the profundus. The superficialis arises from the medial margin of the coronoid process. The flexor digitorum profundus arises from anterior and medial surfaces along with some part of the posterior border and some parts of the olecranon and coronoid as well. Then we have the pronator teres ulnar head arising from the medial margin of the coronoid process once again. Then we have the flexor carpi ulnaris and the extensor carpi ulnaris arising from the posterior border. There is an eponeurosis here and they both are arising from it. The posterior surface, lateral part from above downwards, we have the abductor pollicis longus, the extensor pollicis longus and the extensor indices muscle. In the lower part of the anterior surface, there is an oblique line giving origin to the pronator quadratus muscle, the most strongest pronator of the forearm. And these were the 10 origins. Now let's go with the mnemonic. P cube, P for pronator quadratus, anterior surface oblique line. P for flexor digitorum profundus, anterior and medial surface of the bone, along with posterior bone in some parts of these. And another P is for the pronator teres arising, ulnar head arising from the medial margin of coronoid process. The A is for the abductor pollicis longus muscle. The abductor pollicis longus was arising from the posterior surface lateral part close to the lateral border in or interosseous border. The two U's, this U square, are the ulnaris muscles, the flexor carpi ulnaris and extensor carpi ulnaris arising from eponeurosis of the posterior border of the bone. The S square is for the supinator arising from the supinator crest and another S for the flexor digitorum arising from the medial margin of the coronoid process. And finally, the E square are the two muscles that were left in the posterior surface lateral part. These were the extensor pollicis longus and the extensor indices. So that was all about the origins and insertions of the ulna bone. The clinicals include the Madelung's deformity. Now what is Madelung's deformity? Basically what happens is there is retarded growth of the lower end of the radius which causes dorsal subluxation which means dislocation of the ulnar head or the lower end of the ulna. Thank you so much for watching.